In this video, we're going to design an automatic cardboard box generator in CAD. If we have a thing that needs a box, we'll plug in its length, height, and depth dimensions, and SolidWorks will spit out a flat pattern that this laser will cut out. We'll score the bend lines, cut the outlines, and then fold up some custom boxes for a few things we found kicking around. The chapters for this video are called out in the description, so feel free to skip the boring bits. All the CAD in this video is done in SolidWorks, but you can do the same thing in Fusion 360, which is another amazingly good, but in this case amazingly free, design software. In this video we'll be using Adobe Illustrator to make SVG files, but you can use something like Inkscape, which is free, and it'll do the same thing. We'll be using Laser Gerbil to control and run the laser, which is another free software. And I'm not affiliated with any manufacturers mentioned in this video. So the whole point behind this kind of parametric design is to have SolidWorks create packaging automatically based on only a few parameters. In our case, we're going to create four parameters as global variables that will fully define our box. We're going to make variables for the width, height, and depth of the thing we're trying to package, as well as the thickness of the cardboard we plan to use. We'll start by entering 2.5 inches, 2 inches, and 1 inch for the width, height, and depth of the product respectively. We'll use 12,000 as the thickness of the cardboard, which is the thickness of the cardstock I've got on hand. The first thing we do is create a rectangular sketch on the top plane, and for the width and the height we use the global variables we just created. We can do it by either typing equals, open quote, our variable name, close quote, or equals, and then select the global variable from the dropdown in SolidWorks. We accept the sketch and make an extrude feature. The distance for the extrude is going to be our depth global variable, and we're going to do that in the same way, by entering equals, open quote, our variable name, close quote. So this is the thing we want to package. We'll use this block as a sort of skeleton sketch that'll drive the dimensions of our box. We're going to model the packaging with SolidWorks sheet metal functions, and you can do this in Fusion 362. It's going to be a sort of pizza box style package, so let's be smart and only model half of it, since there's symmetry in a pizza box down the middle. So let's cut this body in half and start with a convert to sheet metal feature. We enter our material thickness, which is 12 thousandths, and our bend radius, which I like to keep at half the material thickness, so 6 thousandths. And here it'd be really nice if we could link these dimensions to our global variables instead of entering them explicitly, but I don't really know how to do this, so if any of you know how to link material thickness and the bend radius of a sheet metal part in SolidWorks to a global variable, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Alright, so we select the bottom face of our half block as the stationary face for the convert to sheet metal feature. And then we select the front and back edges to create the front and back bends. We'll use the SOLIDWORKS Unfold feature here to temporarily flatten what we've made so far, and we can add these little wings or tabs. We're going to use them to help control where the box's flaps fall, and we'll use sketch relations to define where they start and finish, and an equation that references our global variables to define how far out they come. Let's start by having them all stick out by one thickness variable. We'll dimension them all separately so we can control them independently later if we have to. Let's fold this back up. Let's create the side returns of the box and have those edge flanges go half the height variable minus the thickness. We use that equation because we want each flap to come roughly to the halfway point of the box but never touch the other side. So each of these edge flanges goes out by half the height and then we shave off a little bit which is one times the thickness to prevent touching the other flap. Let's bring an edge flange up from the bottom. So there's a little problem here. This edge flange is intersecting those two flaps we just created, so let's push it out by modifying the middle wing or tab feature we created. And we stick to only using our variable so the design stays parametric. Now let's modify the sketches of the two side flaps to pull them off the very top of the box by two times our thickness variable. This will make room for the bottom flange to come up and over these flaps. So let's take that bottom flange and come up to a vertex on the top surface of the box. Then we'll add a hem feature to come up and over the top and back down the side. Similar to the sheet metal thickness and bend radius, we're not really able to enter global variables directly in this hem window, but that's okay. This time there's a workaround. Let's make the length and width of the hem some arbitrary values and then accept the feature. Now in the model space, when we double click on our hem, some blue dimensions pop up. And these we can now click on and modify with our global variables. So for the width of the hem we enter the thickness, plus a tiny bit of clearance, and for the length of the hem we enter the depth variable. Let's make the lid and bring it out to a vertex on the front of the box. Then we'll drop another edge flange down by the distance of our depth variable. We want to have some nice returns on either side of the lid to tuck into the box, so let's move the lid flange over by three times the thickness to make some room. 
Then we put in the return, having it go into the box by half the depth variable, and now there's a little gap here, so let's fix it by tweaking the equation. Let's also taper the edges of the flap. This should help it tuck into the sides more easily. At the front of the box, let's create another wing off the front flap using sketch relations only. Then we can create the little return that'll tuck into the side of the box. It's interfering with the side of the box in our model, but since it's paper, I think it'll work nicely. Let's unfold the front flap so we can round out the side. This will make closing the box a little easier. And just for fun, let's create a little thumb feature on the flap and add some corner chamfers to smooth things out. And this is it. This is our parametric box. Let's change the size of the product to be, say, 20 inches wide, 20 inches tall, and 3 inches deep, like a pizza. Okay, what about 8 inches wide, 3 inches tall, and 1 inch deep? Okay, let's try an inch wide, 10 inches tall, and 2 inches deep. So, so far it seems like it's working. Now let's make a box that's 5 inches wide, 3 inches tall, and 2 inches deep, but let's change the thickness of the cardboard to be a hundred thousandths. So this didn't really work, and it's because we weren't able to link the sheet metal thickness and the bend radius to our global variable. So we can make it work, but we've manually got to go into the sheet metal feature and change them there. And it looks like it worked. The real magic happens here. These CAD softwares will actually spit out the flat pattern for whatever box we design. What if we wanted to make a box for this thing? It's 2 inches 515 thou wide, 2 inches and 450 thou high, and 1 inch deep. So let's dump those numbers into our global variables. Let's pad them a bit. I've added 40 thousandths all around the part just to add a little wiggle room in the box. We'll flatten it out and ask SolidWorks to export a DXF file for us. Comgro just sent me this laser. There's a video coming up about it, but now I'm just kind of learning how to use it. From what I understand, there's two main softwares for running these lasers. There's a $40 option and the software is called Lightburn, and then there's a free option called Laser Gerbil. In this video, I'll be using Laser Gerbil, and it can't read DXFs directly. It likes SVG files, which SolidWorks doesn't export directly. So we need to use something like Adobe Illustrator to open the DXF file from SolidWorks, then convert it to SVG for laser gerbil. Notice how there's two types of lines on this DXF. We've got solid lines on the outline of the flat pattern and dashed lines on the bend edges. This is kind of neat because we can ask laser gerbil to only score the bend lines but fully cut out the outlines by adjusting the laser's power and speed settings. To do this though, we need to make two separate SVG files for laser gerbil. One with only the bend lines and one with only the outlines. So in Illustrator, we have to position the flat pattern on our grid, one on top of the other. We then save two copies of the file, and then in one delete everything except the bend lines, and in the other delete everything except the outlines. Then export each to SVG. In other words, it's a huge pain. From what I understand, Lightburn can import DXF's files directly and selectively choose which lines to run at different settings, which would let us skip this whole multiple file processing in Illustrator altogether. So something tells me I'm going to be $40 poorer soon. But for now, let's bring the bend lines into laser gerbil and specify a speed of 1000 millimeters per minute and a power of 25%. Then let's bring the outline in and run it at 1000 millimeters per minute, but this time at 75% power. It's important to bring the bends in before the outline, because that's the order the laser will run the program. And we don't want the outline to be cut out and then the whole thing may be moving around while we're trying to laser in the bends. Let's send the job to the laser and start making our box. And it looks pretty good. The laser scored our bend lines and cut the shape out nicely. Let's fold it up and see how our part fits. It worked pretty well. You can see that extra headspace on top of the box from my mismeasurement. I've got lots of these semi-used end mills that like to slide around in the toolbox. Together, these nine end mills measure 2.555 inches wide, 1.535 inches high, and 1.535 inches deep. Let's make a box for them. 
We'll dump the measurements into our global variables, this time adding only 20 thousandths all around the pack, export the flat pattern, and make two SVG files. One for the bend lines only, which we'll import first, and one for the outline only, which we'll import second. Let's send the job to the laser and start cutting our file. Let's bend up our flat pattern. And the end mills fit nice. Maybe we want to make a gift box for some coasters. This stack measures 3.35 inches wide, 3.35 inches tall, and 0.71 inches deep. Let's plug these into our global variables to generate a box, and then export the flat pattern. We bring the bend lines and outline files into Laser Gerbil and get to burning another flat pattern. And these fit nice too. Alright, let's make one more. This driver bit box measures 6.3 inches wide, 4 and a quarter inches tall, and 1.77 inches deep. Using the global variables in SOLIDWORKS, we generate another box and export another flat pattern. We set our files up in Laser Gerbil, and this is a big one. Let's send it to the laser to see how we do. Alright, let's bend this up and see how it fits. And again, it seems to have worked. So this is really cool. If you're into making things, you've probably scrambled to find a way to package the thing in a gift or shipping box. And if you only do it once in a while, it probably isn't your biggest problem. But if you ship things often because you have a small business or something, I could see people finding this really useful. I haven't messed around with graphics yet, but you could customize the packaging further with burned in images or logos or something to make it even more personalized. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video.